Hello, welcome to Helicopter Train Videos. In this video, we're going to look at the new SVR73 changes, which go into effect August 22nd, 2024. Wow, what a year. What a year of big changes for the uh, US helicopter training industry. First, the new ACS and now an SVR73 update. In this video, we're going to talk about the SVR73 update with a quick bit of background about what it is, some history, obviously the changes in detail, and then a little bit about the future. And as always, we'll have uh, links for more information. So Special Federal Aviation Regulation Number 73, otherwise known as SVR73, is about the R22 and R44 specific regulations of required training and experience for pretty much anyone who wants to manipulate the flight controls, act as PIC, carry passengers, conduct flight instruction or flight reviews in an R22 or an R44. It does not apply to the R66. If you want more information on the SVR73 in detail, we have an explained article, uh, which I'll put a link to in the description. Obviously, that will be having some updates done to it for these changes. So first of all, a little bit of history. In 1979, the R22 type certificate was issued. And then in 92, the certificate for the R44 after some accident investigation and recommendations from the NTSB in 1995, the FAA concluded its own accident analysis. These are quotes from the recent SVR 73 final rule. They found that there was a high number of fatal accidents compared to other piston powered helicopters. And they put that down to pilot performance or inexperience with low RPM and low G conditions causing mass bumping and airframe contacts with the main rotor. Certain aerodynamic and design features result in specific flight characteristics that require particular pilot knowledge and responsiveness to operate these models safely. In the latest SVAR 73 final rule, the FAA went on also to note that it's not unusual that uh, SVARs to be issued. There was one issued for a Mitsubishi MU-2B aircraft, which was called SVAR 108 in 2008. That was eventually, in 2016, moved into Part 61 in its new own dedicated subpart N. SVARs are supposed to be temporary. Although the R44 had only really been just certified at this point a few years prior, the FAA thought that the R44 was similar enough to the R22 to warrant the same concerns, and so issued SVAR 73 to cover both R22 and R44. You can see here they determined that specific training experience requirements were necessary for the safe operation of the R22 and the R44. An accident that happened in Germany with an intentional low G training accident in an R44 resulted in AD 95, 11, 09, and 10 to be issued to prohibit intentional low G in the R22 and R44. That's that placard you're going to see on the on the cyclic, and obviously it's also in the limitations. That is contrary to the SVR 73's requirement for low G flight training, and up until now it had never been resolved. By the way. Great article by Tim Tucker of Robinson Helicopters. The story behind special FAR 73 or SVR 73 goes into a lot more detail of the history of, of the SVR 73. Fast forward to 2011, the FAA formed a safety risk management team to assess SVR 73. That involved rep representation from the FAA, various departments of the FAA or sections of the FAA, as well as Helicopter Association International, HAI, which is now as of earlier this year, VAI, Vertical Association International, as well as, of course, Robinson Helicopters and two designated pilot examiners or DPEs that were familiar with the airframes. 49-page report. It's actually quite an interesting read. Again, I'll put the link down in the description there. One of the things they were looking at was the accidents of the R22, R44, and the R66 based on NTSB data from 1980 to 2021. I've never seen the numbers laid out like this before, broken down like this, where you can see um, by the different airframes, fatal, non-fatal, and then the different types. Obviously, this is just looking at the 22, 44, and 66. It's not comparing to the uh, other light helicopters. Also interesting reading, for me at least, was how each of the different entities, the different departments of the FAA and the Robinson HEI and the DPEs, what comments and recommendations they had. Things like, should an authorized R22 and R44 instructor have to do two model-specific flight reviews? Uh, one of them was suggesting, no, we do not have to do that. That did not get into the changes at this point, though. And then in October of 2023, the FAA published a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, MPRM, for SVR 73 changes. They opened that to public comment. 
Only five comments were received. That was by Robinson, HAI, and three individuals. Robinson requested that the R44 be removed from SVR 73, but it was denied at this point. The FAA is considering that suggestion and some other recommendations from the report over the next five years, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then in 2024, July 23rd, the revised SVAR 73 was published as a final rule with an effective date, August 22nd, 2024. So let's get into the changes. What's going to change? So enhanced order rotations. It used to say in the SVAR 73 that enhanced training and order rotation procedures was required, but the word enhanced was never defined. And that's always been something of uh, contention about what, what is an enhanced, what is an enhanced order rotation. Now it says, training and order rotation procedures and energy management, including utilizing a combination of flight control inputs and maneuvering to prevent overshooting or undershooting the selected landing area from an entry altitude that permits safe recovery. First of all, I don't know how you can maneuver an aircraft without control inputs. It says they're a combination of flight control inputs and maneuvering. I think that's just a given. If you make a control input, the aircraft is gonna maneuver in response. It also says auto rotations at an entry altitude that permits safe maneuvering and recovery utilizing minimum rate descent configuration, that's for the R44 only, and maximum glide configuration for both the R44 and the R22. So now we have specific auto rotation training requirements that are slightly different between the 22 and the 44. The minimum rate descent was not included in the R22 because it's not published in the R22 POH. We know that in the R44 it's published as 55 knots and 90% RPM. And the R22, I think most people are instructing minimum rate descent using the 53 knots from the POH, which would be the best climb rate and 90%. I'm pretty sure that most instructors will probably still do the minimum rate descent in the R22. On to low G flight training. We know that intentional low G is prohibited, but it is also contrary to the SVAR 73 requirements. Well, that's changed. Uh, we now no longer have a requirement to do low G flight training. Even before this change, we could still train in the aircraft on low G recovery in flight. We basically talk through the scenario, we feel light in our seat, we give an uncommanded right roll, and then from there the student recovers. I think that's valuable flight training, working on muscle memory from the recovery, and we're not exceeding any limitations or any maneuvers that are prohibited. Uh, the FAA didn't quite see it that way. Instead of rewording SFR to say something like flight training on low G recovery from a theoretical low G scenario, I think that would have been a good thing to add it. But instead of doing that, they took out low G out of the flight training requirements completely. Now, it's still in the ground training requirement. We're still going to discuss it in ground training. I think for the instructors that do low G recovery training, they will probably continue to do that even though it is not a flight requirement anymore. Here you can see a quick clip of how I do that training. So I'll say to you, okay, let's imagine we're just flying through turbulence and you start to, you suddenly start to feel very light yeah. in the aircraft and it starts an uncommanded right roll. Okay. Okay, and I will then, I'm gonna simulate that. I'll say, okay, we're feeling suddenly light in our seat, we get an uncommanded right roll and we've got to come back. Okay. Half cycle, feel really heavy. Okay. And then gradually roll back okay. to the left and bring the airspeed back in. And we don't want to get into another, we don't want to get into a low G situation trying to get that airspeed back by pushing forward quick. And then you've got to think about, now what do I need to do to get out of this situation of turbulence? Do I need to slow down to 60 to 70? Do I need to get away from the backside of this hill? Okay. Do I need to think about making an emergency landing? Let's make a okay, goodbye Jow, hello Gimmel. So instructors and students use GEL, G-E-L-L, -L, as a memory aid for the SFR 73 flight training requirements, and that would be to cover the governor off, enhanced autos, low RPM, and low G. But with these changes, that's not going to work. So I'm proposing GIML, G-I-M-L, or G-I-M squared L for the R44. So that would cover governor off, inputs to avoid overshoot, undershoot, max glide and minimum rate if you're in the R44, and then low RPM. So Gimmel, give it a go. See if that works for you guys. Uh, send a comment to, to me if you have any other ideas, but uh, I spent a few days thinking that up. I'm pretty pleased with myself. All right, awareness training. So awareness training is now been renamed ground training to be consistent with regulations and definitions. Part 61 defines ground training as training other than flight training received from an authorized instructor. So there, there might be a slight change to wording on new endorsements, 
but the final rule says that no updates are required for endorsements, websites, or other publications for these changes. Uh, but I will be changing the wording on the endorsements I give just slightly just to be fully in line with this, this new change. So in the past, it would say awareness training endorsement. The new version I would be issuing would be ground training endorsement, and it would still reference the same uh, regulations. They also added the wording to clarify that that ground training or what used to be the awareness training is intended to cover both R22 and R44, so you wouldn't need to issue two separate endorsements. I've never done that anyway. I've always put in the title of the endorsement that it is R22 and R44 endorsement. Rename Bladestool. So Bladestool can be confused with Retreating Bladestool and Robinson, for those of you who've been to the safety course or looked at any of the safety nurses, Robinson do not like this phrase to be used for what is essentially Rotostool. So that's, a, I think, a good change that they got this change to Rotostool. And that is more consistent with the recent Helicopter Flying Handbook and the, and the Robinson Safety Notices. They both make the distinction between blade stool and rotor stool. Another change to the wording, the wording of certified instructor is now changed to instructor authorized or authorized instructor under SVAR 73. This is again to be consistent with existing regulations. The uh, FARs use authorized instructor. They don't use certified instructor if you, if you search through any of the regulations there. So you can see the old version. Awareness training must be conducted by a certified flight instructor. The new version, ground training, must be conducted by a flight instructor who has been authorized. You be authorized by endorsement from an FAA inspector or a DPE, designated pilot examiner. They also made some reformatting to the annual review that's required for pilots with less than 200 hours, helicopter less than 50 hours in the 22 or 44. Those requirements were really kind of lost in a paragraph talking about general PIC requirements. Uh, so this has now got its own dedicated paragraph and uh, as also has references to the required ground of flight training. The formatting down here on that second one doesn't look quite the same as what it will do once it's published, but it'll have its own block uh, and be its own clear separate piece. Also, removed legacy dates. These dates are well past and no longer needed. They made sense, of course, when SVAR was introduced nearly 30 years ago, but those are all being pulled out. Now, the old SVAR had an expiry date of this SVAR will remain in effect until revised or rescinded. Now, the FAA hasn't finished with the changes to SVAR 73, so they've added a five-year expiration date, which now is going to be August 22nd, 2029. What are they doing? Well, let's talk about that. So many recommendations were in the SRM report, uh, but the FAA stated that this, ru this rulemaking was not intended to implement all recommendations set forth by the SRM team, and the FAA undertook this rulemaking to adopt recommendations that would not substantially change the current training and experience regime as the first step in a tiered long-term revision to the SFR 73. So we know there's more changes coming, so the next five years, the FAA plans to review and refine the requirements for the R-22 and R-44 helicopters for eventual movement also into a permanent location in Title 14. So that'll be a subpart O, P, Q, whatever it might be, just like the Mitsubishi one. You know, I have many questions about what those changes might bring. Will the R-44 be removed from SFAR? Will the new horizontal stabilizer change things at all? I'm sure we'll find out in 2029, if not before. And probably by then, most of you will not be flying R-22s or R-44s. So in the meantime, I better start updating all the SFR 73s articles and videos, as well as the quiz that I made. Uh, but here are some links to those, plus other references. They'll be in the description. Also, there's links to an Amazon affiliate link for the 2025 FAR AIM, if you want a paper copy. And... By using that link, you're supporting helicopter train videos with no extra cost to you. So I appreciate that. Let me know if you have any other thoughts to these changes in the comments below. 
If you want more helicopter training videos, check out our helicopter ground school series or the helicopter flight maneuver series. Or perhaps you want to follow along with a student from day one all the way through to the check ride with our full flight lesson series. And if you haven't already, please click subscribe to get all the latest videos and help promote the channel. And finally, for more information on helicopter train videos, including articles, resources, quizzes, and more, and learn how to support this volunteer project, check out our website, helicoptertrainingvideos.com. Thanks for watching.